Oh, Fernando, you should be scared. Greetings, you great human beings, and welcome to another series. A new series on the channel. Today, the goal is simple. 23 races of the finest Formula 1 driving you'll ever see to try and get Alonso a Drivers World Championship. So without further ado, let's head into qualifying. No tricks being pulled out of a hat. No, oh, Alonso's gone full throttle into a hairpin. No, not this time. We actually properly have done qualifying for once. One shot here in Bahrain. And actually, it's an okay start to proceedings. Verstappen's in another dimension. We'll ignore him. But it's P6 in our first qualifying, which all things considered, given that Aston Martin are frauds, isn't too bad. So the good news is we are very close to those around us. The bad news is Max Verstappen has inhaled coke. Almost half a second to the nearest car. I mean, it's it's ominous. There's, there's no other word for it. It is an ominous benchmark from the reigning champion. However, in race day, we know we have the pace compared to qualifying. So let's not beat around the bush. It's time for the race. It's race day, and our drivers are all out on the grid performing their final checks before we get underway here at the Bahrain International Circuit. I'm not here to listen to Alex chat. Bear codswallop no more. Looking at the strategy then, what I was absolutely certain on was starting on the medium tyres. Everyone else on the softs, but perhaps we've played a blinder. Five red lights, and away we go for the Bahrain Grand Prix. New season, new start, same old Carlos Sainz. Dropping anchor at the start there, and we take off like a speedboat, but Russell tries to sail round the outside. We almost career through Perez's diffuser, but Leclerc's left the door open. Down the inside we go, and already into a podium position, we pick up where Fernando Alonso always leaves off with a lightning start, and we waste no time at all, hurtling our way up the field into the lower podium positions, and now we can get to work. The project is on. The Red Bulls are up the road. Let's crush them. It's bad news, ladies and gentlemen. Leclerc is going to lunch us completely. Like, that's not even close. Although he is on soft tyres. And remember, I said I might have played a blinder here while we almost give him a little peck. We actually do peck his tush. Stop that right now. That's going to break terms of service. But, you know, it can't possibly get worse. We can now use DRS. DRS now available. Okay, that's worse. However, we're not going to take this one lying down. We're going to surge down the inside of George Russell. The currents are really in our favour. And with high voltage, high octane energy fueling our veins, we streak our way past... That's illegal, isn't it? I can't do that. Never mind. Plowing on like a combine orvester into P4. Now at this Bahrain Grand Prix. And success in Sakia. The quest continues as through sector one we go immediately now only lap three it appears that the medium tires are working absolutely beautifully despite a bit of a slide there if we get it all together we're gaining 10th upon 10th to Charles Leclerc and that is phenomenal news for us Charles Leclerc now well within our crosshairs only half a second the gap between ourselves and the Ferrari man Russell Still keeping us honest, I'll have to be honest. The man from Kings Lynn is really trying to put a pin in... That's disgusting. Stop that right now. Ladies and gents, we're, we're basically pushing Leclerc around the track now. I mean, look at this. Lap number five, a quarter of the way through this Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, the gap between Verstappen and Perez is uh, disturbing me, to say the least. And I don't think we're... We've, we're, wait, we're not going to win. I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you all. But Charles Leclerc overtaking him is certainly achievable. Through no stretch of the imagination is he getting away or trying to even get away. We have played a blinder, surely. The crossover has worked wonders here. Only a quarter of the way through the race, those softs have plummeted. The mediums now surge into superiority. Through the right hander we go. The inherent feeling I had with this Aston Martin was actually understeer. Uh, which is quite weird, really. I know it's Aston Martin is mercifully probably one of the most stable in the get. That's not proof. I can't prove that by any stretch, but it felt very stable. Is all I'm trying to say. Through the last corner again, almost dicing with death with Leclerc's diffuser. But this time we have the RS. We have guts. We have guile. We're gonna go down the inside, but play it safe. Leclerc actually turns across us, but crucially staying behind. Chop him off at turn one, and we 
have DRS. So we have played a very intelligent move there, getting the DRS. Leclerc can't get anywhere near us, and the chase for Perez begins. Lap number eight now of this race. We've had to bide our time, but slowly but surely, we have really lunched in Perez. Oi, 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 oi. Steady on on the controls there, Mr. Fernando. That was very close to being a highly embarrassing moment. There's a yellow flag now up ahead for some reason. Perez is right within our reach. He's breaking suddenly. I've no idea what. Oh, my God. Verstappen's out. Oh, my God. No way. No way, Jose. We can't even dwell on that. We're going to have to make the move on Perez. Green flags are now. And the overtake is done on the Mexican master of being slow. So I say it every race, but it's just true. Fernando Alonso in familiar territory, though. P1, head of the pack, leading the field. We are going for that 33rd win. But first, into the pits we go. Lap number nine of this race, just now crossing onto the fulcrum point of this Bahrain Grand Prix. We're going to get that purple turn in. Obviously, we do. And let's see what the Aston Martin boys can work in the pit lane. The answer is an absolute miracle. Perez, surely more than a second behind us, must have got held up. I mean, loads of cars have come in, so it would not surprise me even slightly. But lighting up the rear tyres, killing a few happy polar bears. But even so, we can forget about the icebergs for one second because we've got to play it cool, have ice in our veins all the way through this first lap of just coaxing the hard tyres in. Ricardo is the first one that will be dominated by a hard-on. It... I should really stop saying things. If you ever need an illustration of just how much more powerful new tyres are compared to old softs, I mean, this will exasperate the issue even more in the AI's case. But you are seeing the fruits of my labour right now as through the right-hander we go. Not a particularly good right-hander. And we are nearly within half a second of Ricardo. Could have been even closer had we kept it together. But you know what? I don't really care. A very shallow entry into the pit. Le a pit. That, that's not right. But there technically is a pit lane there for the, like some different layout. But anyway, Ricardo needs to be dispatched off. Surge down the inside. He moved pretty late there. Reactionary move from Danny Rick. I am not happy about that, but I am very happy with the fact I am now up into P6. And the, now we have another car between us and Perez, who's already got past that Alfa Romeo. So we continue our quest for more. Hulkenberg now extremely slow in a straight line to the inside again. Almost reactionary, but much more textbook. An A-star grade there for a very, very textbook move. Marked to perfection, and we have DRS as we head on to lap number 11 of the Bahrain Grand Prix. And our job now is to simply and hopefully remain consistent. The gap to Perez, two seconds. And what we need to do is just continue to keep him at arm's length. Lap 13, two laps later, and he's only caught us by half a second. And the more he tries to push, the more he continues to try and curtail our charge and our conquest for Sakir's success. The more of his tyres he's going to use and the more that crossover will come into effect. We gain a tenth on that particular lap and now it looks like the issue is really going to play into our hands as through the final corner again across the line, we are finally gaining good time on Perez. So on lap number 15 here, as long as we keep it consistent... I'm confident we can win this race. I don't know if it would have been the case if Verstappen had been in this race, but whether or not he would have been, we're going to win. Unless we have a, a crippling skill issue, but nah, I'm sure that won't happen. Lap number 17 through towards sector three at a rapid rate of knots through this side-winding snaily section. It's not even a snail section because it is pretty quick. My God, the car goes light. We make almost a complete Horlix of it. Luckily, keep the car pointing in the right direction and don't lose that much time to Perez behind. It's almost like you can't write this stuff, really, but that was squeaky bum time. Lap 18, and it's a, it's a demolition. But as you can see, we just gain time after time after time on Sergio Perez. I, you, you just can't write a fairy tale this good in this career mode. Verstappen, easily the favourite to win pretty much every single race this season, finds himself emotionally damaged, extremely damaged, now has a 25-point deficit to me as long as I bring it home. Hamilton, by the way, is all the way down at the back. You can see him there going through the first sector. 
I have no idea what happened. I think he must have made contact with one of the McLarens, who are doing pretty well. Yes, they've benefited from other people dropping out of this race, one of which is my teammate, who was running in P9. It could have been a double points finish, but unfortunately, that silence there is the sound of me not caring. 3.2 seconds the gap, and it's just, it's a lap of honour. It is a lap of honour. Honor. Project 33 started at the beginning of this season with an Aston Martin car with strength in spades. No one could have ever predicted this. First race for Aston Martin, first race in the Alonso career mode, going for three championships, and what a way to start! Successor Sakir is ours! We win the Bahrain Grand Prix! The first time of asking. Project number 33 is already done, and now we go for so much more in 2023. Driver of the day, all the plaudits, and the celebrations can begin. That was brilliant stuff from Aston Martin today. What a superb victory. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Aston Martin's performance today has shown that they can be competitive with the biggest names in the sport. They're making their way out onto the podium now as we speak. And the reaction from the crowd must be incredibly uplifting for them. Poetry in motion. Unbelievable. Fernando Alonso back on top of the Formula One top step of the podium. That made no sense, but it makes so much sense for him to be back where he belongs. That's mission number one complete. And now we have the bigger mission to head for. More victories, more podiums, consistency, and then hopefully a championship to boot. Three seconds to Sergio Perez in the end. Sakir, what a sublime scenario we find ourselves in. Fastest of the weekend other than Max Verstappen. We were untouchable. We went for the harder tyre strategy. The gamble paid off so handsomely. There's confirmation for Verstappen and Stroll, unfortunately. DNFing out of the race. It could have been a double points finish for us, but not to be. But perhaps... Come the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, we can go for yet another win and even more big points. Until then, thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.